Hello everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and today I have this synthesis for you. And the very first thing that jumps at me right away is how my starting material maps onto the part of my product. So that means that in the course of this synthesis, I would have to make this carbon-carbon bond over here, and I would also have to synthesize the ester. And starting my retrosynthetic analysis here, I'm going to deal with the ester right away. And there is a million of ways how we can synthesize that ester. We can use Fischer esterification, which would mean I would have to start with the carboxylic acid and the corresponding alcohol, or I can form methyl ether by using diazomethane and the corresponding acid as well, or I can do an SN2 reaction in which my carboxylate is going to attack my my CH3 of the methyl iodide, displace that iodine and give me my ester as the final product. Since at the time of recording of this video we are finishing up the first semester of organic chemistry, I would go with the reaction that would be familiar to students in the first semester of organic chemistry, which is the SN2 method, so I'm going to go with this one. Now, how am I going to make this carboxylic acid or carboxylate? I do remember that I still need to make this carbon-carbon bond because I have one extra carbon, so in this case we are going to use our good old friend the Grignard reaction, where my starting materials are going to be the corresponding alkyl magnesium bromide and carbon dioxide. Now the Grignard reagent can be easily synthesized from the corresponding alkyl halide, and that alkyl halide, well, that is where I'm going to have a little bit of a problem, because now I need to find a way how to put the bromine on the very end of my starting material, and we don't have a reaction that can do it directly, so that means that we are going to play with a lot of functional groups and moving functional groups throughout our molecule in order to be able to accomplish something like that. So the predecessor to my alkyl halide must be a corresponding alkene, looking like this, because the only way that we know within the scope of our course how to put the bromine onto the edge of our molecule like that is by using the radical hydrohalogenation and that will put the bromine right onto the less substituted carbon of the alkene, which brings me to a problem of how am I going to make this alkene. Well, we normally make alkenes via the elimination reaction, which means that I'm going to have two possible starting materials for this elimination reaction, and the bottom one this molecule is not going to work because, well, that's what we're trying to make, so I cannot have something that I'm trying to make as a starting material, which means that this guy is out of question. Now, how am I going to make this alkyl halide? Well, again, through the reaction of my alkenes. There are two possible alkenes that I can use to make this alkyl halide. One possibility is going to be the alkene that looks like this, and in this case we can use the radical hydrohalogenation, and the other possibility is going to be the alkene that's looking like that. Well, this one actually will not work, because if we attempt to uh, do the hydrohalogenation, we are going to end up with a carbocation rearrangement, and that is the alkene that we are trying to make, so again, using the same logic as in the... Um, step before, we're not going to be using that one because that's what we're trying to make. So this alkene is also out of question. Now, how do we make alkenes? via the elimination reaction. So that means that the two possible starting materials for this elimination are now going to be this molecule or that molecule. Now, for the same reasons as before, this guy is not going to work, so we are left with only one alkyl halide being this molecule. And now, finally, we know that we can easily make that halide by the radical halogenation of our starting material, so we have finally reached our starting material point. And now, since I have my entire synthesis outlined, I can fill in the gaps and show all the reagents for all the steps. So step number one, starting from my starting material, is going to be the radical halogenation. I'm going to use bromine and light, which going to give me a corresponding bromide. Then we are going to perform the elimination reaction by using something like sodium methoxide as our base, which would give us our alkene that we are going to treat with hydrogen bromide in the presence of peroxides to initiate the radical hydrohalogenation, putting the bromine onto the less substituted atom of the double bond, followed by the elimination with the bulky base because we want to make sure that we are making the Hoffman product, so the less substituted double bond, and therefore we need a bulky base. So our elimination product is going to look like this, 
Now, from this point, we are going to perform our uh, radical hydrohalogenation one more time, finally putting bromine onto the very end of our molecule where we initially wanted to have it, converting that into the corresponding Grignard reagent by uh, reacting it with the magnesium turnings, and finally we are going to take our Grignard reagent, react it with CO2, typically in the form of the dry ice, and we will quench that with CH3I, affording us our final ester as the final product. So remember, sometimes in synthesis you are going to perform the same steps over and over again because there is no magic pill. You cannot just easily put the functional group where you want it. Occasionally you will have to walk through the chain in your molecule step by step and you will have to perform the same steps over and over again to make those steps happen. So if you don't see a way how to put the functional group or a halogen or whatever else that might be onto an atom where you want it to have, think about this reaction stepwise and then perform the necessary steps to get you where you need to be. And don't be afraid to use the same steps over and over again if you need to move the functional group throughout your molecule. Of course, if you have to do the same steps five or six times, probably you're not doing something correctly and there is an easier way, but two or maybe three times in a row, that's something that we can definitely expect at this point in our course. Well, what did you think about this synthesis? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you learned something new today, please hit that like button to help promote this video and help more students see it, subscribe to the channel for daily organic chemistry updates, watch this video next, and I will see you tomorrow.